Hey, good day, everyone. Thanks for watching the King Nigel Show. And welcome to the King Nigel Show. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. It would be greatly appreciated. I hope that everyone is staying safe. I hope that everyone is having a great day. And be careful, as well as be mindful, that COVID is very contagious. The cases are alarmingly rising pertaining to COVID, and it's very contagious. You know, keep your family and loved ones safe by, you know, performing or utilizing social distancing. Okay, with that being said, um, you know, it's a lot going on right now, as we know, with Ahmad, Arby, Breon Taylor, you know, George Floyd. The whole kerfuffle, you know, the whole racial injustice against blacks, minorities, brown-skinned people, you know, it's still ongoing. Let's say, for an example, Breon Taylor, how the officers had ran in the house and everything. First, they said they had a, a no-knock, no announced warrant. Then they said that it was changed in the midst of it being executed to a knock and announce warrant. You know, things to cover their tales, as well as the, let's say, the line of the actual district attorney that's there, you know, in Kentucky, Daniel Cameron, Coomerin, they call him, you know, lied to the grand jury, you know, stuff like that. You know, you're dealing with things, you know, pertaining to the law. A lot of these officers, a lot of these officials sometimes feel as if they are above the law, you know, like it's not pertaining to them, you know, so they abuse their power their power you know and it causes things to go in a bad direction it doesn't end up good at all you know but this is the situation here there's an officer a SWAT officer that was shot in jacksonville florida approximately two months ago i would say sometime in september executing a warrant approximately eight in the morning or so between eight and nine a.m that particular day at the wrong address and now Anthony Gant and uh, Diamonds Ford is now incarcerated. The charges were um, possession of marijuana or armed marijuana. I don't know what they call the statutes there as far as pertaining to the law, you know, pertaining to like drugs and guns or whatever the case may be. But I know the feds is Project Exile, or they call it Trigger Lock, I guess. Um, the officer ended up getting shot in the chest. Um, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. And at first, you know, the charge, like I said, was possession charge. Let's just put it like that. And now it's upgraded to attempted murder. And this is the, th this is the thing. The story goes as diamonds for it. The lady that's still incarcerated. Um, heard some crashing coming in through a window. Her bathroom window was being broken. So, in return, thinking it was an intruder, she fires around out the window and hit the officer. I, I presume that's how the officer got hit. This, um a shot being fired at the back of the window. <clears throat> now, during the whole, you know, confusion of this whole thing, Diamonds Ford calls 911 and saying that she hears an intruder trying to break into her house. So, she's on the phone with a dispatcher. For a couple minutes, for a couple seconds at least, goes by. At that point, then you hear the officers announce themselves as SWAT or Jacksonville police. You know, but this is the thing: when you violate someone's Fourth Amendment by executing a warrant at the wrong address, I mean that warrant is not sufficient enough to allow these officers to have this immunity. You know, that they always look for this qualified immunity. You know, all that stuff goes away as an officer executing a warrant. You are unlawfully executing a warrant, violating someone's Fourth Amendment in the privacy of their own home. You can't expect to be upheld as a police officer in good faith doing the right thing, protecting and serving. And in fact, you're actually making a big, big mistake and you're wrong about the whole scenario. But you expect your rights to still be upheld in a court of law. You know, it's unfortunate that the officer has gotten shot. 
you know, I believe it was a black officer. But still, black officers can be race soldiers as well, along with these Caucasian officers and these other officers that have issues with the minorities. Whatever the case is, blacks or whatever it is, you know, you have people that are very prejudiced and they're very racist. And their actions will show and display such things. Now, this is the thing. I'm confused of how an officer can execute a search warrant at the wrong address, but charges still be, a, you know, brought upon the homeowner. And you have a right to protect your life. You have a right to protect your home. You have a right, you have a right to still, you know, have your privacy in your own home, you know, without someone invading and coming in. Now, see what the search warrant does. It exempts a civilian's Fourth Amendment. It says we have a right to be here to search your house for whatever is listed in the search warrant. You know, officers may say, you know, because they've been doing this for so long, they've been doing this for so long, they're specialists, this, and expert out this, they're expert out that. You know, as far as how a person wouldn't know that it is, in fact, an officer, you can actually tell by the young lady's voice that she was confused by this whole thing, you know. So when these officers execute a warrant, depending on if the officer is right-handed or left-handed, they have a baton. It extends in everything, you know. He will have his firearm in one hand, possibly stand to the right of the window or the left of the window, bash it in, you know, leaning to the side where you can't see anything but it's black battalion you coming in through your window if you can see, or whatever color it is. You know, they are not in view at all, okay? So, because they, they can possibly get shot and killed. So, so they're going to be to the side where, you know, they have a good vantage point, you know, to at least return fire or, you know, uh, take cover or something like that. But, you know, this this is how far it goes to where these officers are corrupt. They go and try to cover up things. They try to bring charges after the fact, get search warrants after the fact for certain things that they find in someone's house, after, especially after they're going into the wrong home. You know, but I'm going to have a video, y'all, to show y'all what's going on. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this because a lot of this has been going on and now it's being brought to light. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching my show. You know, I'm wolfing it out right now. You know, it's the winter time, so I'm letting the girl a little bit. You feel me? But yeah, y'all, stay safe. And thanks for watching The King Show. Please like, subscribe, and share. Attorney to say she didn't mean to do it. In September, we first told you about the arrest of Diamonds Ford and her fiancé, Anthony Gant. Both were taken into custody after police executed a search warrant for a narcotics investigation at their home on Rutledge Pearson Drive in northwest Jacksonville. Now, before officers made entry, police said Ford fired a shot out of a window of the home, hitting an officer who thankfully survived. Ford's attorney says new 911 audio shows she fired in self-defense. On your side's David Jones is at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office with more tonight. The attorney for suspect Diamonds Ford says the 911 call she made as Jacksonville SWAT officers and DEA agents were entering her home proves that she didn't mean to shoot a police officer, that she didn't even know police were outside. Tonight we'll take a listen to that call and hear from our crime and safety expert. Jacksonville 911, what's the address of your emergency? 911. Ford's attorney says she called 911 from the bathroom after firing a shot out of the window. Somebody, Moments later, police can be heard outside. Oh, wait, what? Wait, that's the sheriff's office. She's afraid. That's the very first thing that you can hear. Stephen Kelly is representing Ford. What you don't hear is you don't hear the police announcing themselves. You don't hear that until quite some time later. And then as soon as you hear them announce themselves, you know what she does? She completely complies. She complies immediately. Kelly says Ford told him she didn't know police were outside, that a window had been broken, and she thought someone was trying to burglarize the home. It's hard to fire a weapon out of a window if you don't know what you're looking at. On your side's crime and safety expert, Mark Bachman, has extensive experience in high-risk search warrants and in the DEA. My belief is, is that when that weapon was discharged, she knew who she was shooting at at that time. There's no doubt in my mind. And I can base that on my experience as well as internal information I'm getting from law enforcement sources. Bachman says it's still the early stages of the investigation and more information released could paint a clearer picture of how that day played out. The sheriff's office and state attorney's office have not commented publicly because the investigation is still ongoing and we're still working to learn whether any of the officers present that night were wearing body cams. We're in Jacksonville. David Jones, First Coast News.